Hi, Sophia. Hi. So first of all, Sophia's book comes out in paperback today, which is a huge, massive, very nasty deal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what would you, when you started writing this, did you ever envision how successful it would be? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I wrote a book about my life. It's, it's funny. It's a little bit of a memoir, which is kind of a goofy thing to do mm -hmm. in your 20s. Um, but I knew that there was a girl out there like me who, you know, maybe hadn't found the business book section of the bookstore, but had ambitions. And mm -hmm. I kind of stumbled upon business. And I, I, I sought out to write the gateway drug uh, for the business book section for girls. And I feel like I may have succeeded in that. What's been kind of the most surreal fan encounter you've had since the book came out? Oh, wow. Um, fan encounter? Mm -hmm. Like where someone just tells you that you've changed their life or you've impacted their yeah, life? Yeah, or... we had an event last night. It was the kickoff to this paperback tour. Mm -hmm. I'm actually getting on this crazy like tour bus with the book cover like plastered on it uh, next week. And this was in Jersey City at Word Bookstore, and it was an awesome event. And so a year and a half after the book was published, now I'm meeting people who've read the book and are bringing these tattered paperbacks with like inscriptions from their father who's like, girls can do anything, and like, you know, graduation gift, whatever. And yeah, some of them had like been fired from their jobs or quit their jobs um, and realized that it was like the best thing that ever happened to them, were on to starting their own businesses, and just kind of like learning, learning what their strengths were and what, what's right for them after reading the book. And your book really is so inspiring. I mean, you went from literally nothing to running a huge company and getting, uh, going through the venture capital process twice. Um, three times. Th three times now. Um, what, uh, when did you realize that you had a viable idea on your hands? I mean, anything's viable if someone, you know, if you have one thing that someone's willing to buy, it's viable. It's like mi minimal, minimally, what is it? Um, minimum viable, whatever. Um, yeah, it, tell that to the people who founded Pencils.com, right? Uh-oh, <laughs> was that a thing? It was like a billion years ago, yeah. Wow, cool. <laughs> um, did, I would never try that. I, I think it was just, you know, eBay's a place where you can test things. So there's, pla there's platforms like mm -hmm. Etsy now, and starting an online store is so much easier. I mean, people have Instagram stores. So putting something out there just to see what the appetite is um, was what I did and what a lot of people do. Other people have big business plans and raise a ton of money before they do any of that, which is a whole other way of going about it. But it was, you know, the biggest moment, I think, when I knew I was really onto something was when I bought, like, an $8 Chanel, a, a Chanel jacket in a thrift store for $8 and, and put it on. You made it for 1000 you wrote. Yeah, for, yeah. like, over $1,000. And it was just like, wow, you know, I'm turning. I mean, Chanel obviously has some value, but with every small thing that mm -hmm. I bought at the thrift store, most of these things weren't designer goods to turn something that I bought for $5 into something that someone was willing to bid on for like 150 or something, you know, however much they wanted it, um, was such a great lesson in perceived value. And, you know. and what I found so interesting too is when you were meeting with the v uh, VC firms, you guys already were making money and they said that they never see that. They always have people coming in with like these yeah. crazy ideas and give us 100 million and like, yeah. you know. I think being naive is kind of like a good thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I thought a business was something where you made money. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I've learned since then that it's, that's actually a really hard thing to do and it's gotten even harder for us. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, I have a few hundred dollars, I'm gonna make it into a few hundred more and then like spend some of it, but not all of it and keep investing in the business. And I did that from the beginning. At a certain point, I had saved like a million dollars in cash, like in my Wells Fargo checking account, mm -hmm. my corporate checking account. I like incorporated with uh, what's it called? Uh, um, not LoopNet. That's like a legal zoom. Legal net. Like legal, legal zoom. Legal zoom. Nasty gal was incorporated on legal zoom, um, and which is like you know I had like two twenty five hundred bucks in my personal bank account and like a million in nasty gals, and I was like very happy, happy camper at like twenty five or twenty six or whatever. That's, and you're like, yeah, I had a million in my company. It's funny. Like, it was you know, really, it was uh, just, it was like kind of absurd. And I just kept, you just keep it there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What kind of boss are you? Or what kind, kind of, of boss, boss do you strive to be? Um, I think I'm a boss that likes to let people show up and like write their job description as they go. I've learned that that doesn't always work. So I'm learning how to get them there. Mm -hmm. um, as an entrepreneur, it's, um, not always easy to initially relate to different types of people that need to learn and be led differently. Um, and that's something that takes a lifetime, I think, to get really, really good at. 
Um, and earlier this year, I promoted our president and chief product officer to CEO and stayed in the executive chairman role, which I already was, because it's like she wakes up every day inspired to lead people. Being inspired is not enough. She has the chops to yeah. do it. And you know, after having worked for her with her for a year, I knew that she was the person that could do that for the company. And I'm still learning from her and from everyone around me every day. Do you, was it harder as a woman? I mean, I guess you were never a man, so you don't, you can't speak to that. But did mm -hmm. you find that people took you less seriously or? Um, no. No, but I think I had the, the there's, a, there's a bit of privilege in having been an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. having the company be profitable. When I went to these meetings, I wasn't asking for anything. I was taking like informational meetings mm -hmm. because these people had reached out to me. I know that's not the case in large companies. I know that there still is an equal pay, but I've had a different experience. But I'm also someone who doesn't enter a room and says like, uh-oh, I'm only the only woman in the room mm -hmm. or I'm the only fill in the blank in the room because that's not really going to get you anywhere. Um, I think just assuming that you have value and acting as if until someone else really proves that they don't agree with you is the best way to go because that'll, you know, it opens up like the psychic room for you to be what, what you should be, you know, perceived as. And what advice would you give the young Sophia? Um, I get that question a lot and I feel like I mean, the only advice I would give myself is like calm down, like be patient, and that's something I still struggle with. Mm -hmm. I think it's good that Sherry's CEO because I can be like a very distracting force, and I can just I'm like constantly distracting myself, but I can also just drum up a lot of ideas um, and have fun with it. So, Girl Boss, for example, is like going to be more than a book; like it's going to be a podcast, and I want to, you know, is it a media? Who knows what it, it could be. Um, and that's, that's something that like, I really enjoy, enjoy doing. Focus is not my, my strength. <laughs> well, where, I mean, where do you see yourself in, in one year, five years, 10 years? Like I know that um, mm -hmm. I read an interview with you, I think in mm -hmm. L, where you said you visualize yourself never flying commercial again. I'm with you on that. Oh God, I mean, I didn't say, I said I would, if, if I would be a happy camper if. Yeah. I think it's crazy to be like, I will definitely be flying private, <laughs> like no. Hey, but there's, um, a, there's worse things to visualize. Something, it's the only like comfort, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, that's the only thing, it's just whatever, I, so I hopped on someone's plane once and I was like, this is amazing. Like if I could ever pull this off, that would be super cool. Um, in a year, two years, five years, I don't know, maybe have a kid or a couple of kids, my poodles will be older, um, maybe the plants were, will be bigger in my yard. Hopefully Nasty Gal is like, you know, a company that has more muscle memory than it does today. Mm -hmm. It's been, you know, it's just, it's a struggle having grown as fast as we did, getting it right and having the infrastructure that we need. Infrastructure is just kind of like this unglamorous word, um, but it's something that we have to build and like retrofit the company with all the time as, um, as technology changes, as the company's needs change, as the customer's demands change. Um, I mean, I would love Nasty Gal to be a global brand. I'd love to have more stores, and I'd love Girl Boss to be, um, you know, a place where people can go and be inspired by other people's stories. Um, mine's just one, and that it was the spark to, um, I don't know, the word becoming almost like a part of the American lexicon, it seems like, is like, it's like, cool, now what do I do with it? You know, it's like a book, a book's not, a book's not enough. And you're writing a second book, so what can you say about that? I can't really say much about it, but I'm really excited about it. Um, and I'm working on it. <laughs> and let's talk about your foundation, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Thank you. Um, so I started the Girl Boss Foundation kind of in tandem with the book. And uh, we've given over $75,000 in grants to, just in like the last year, year and a half, to um, women pursuing creative business endeavors. So uh, there's a girl named Kristen Chang who hand illustrates these beautiful scarves. She applied to um, make a sample set of pajamas out of her, the beautiful scarves mm -hmm. that she makes, but making a one set of samples to take to a showroom to hope that they pick you up and carry your line is not a cheap thing to do, and you actually have to pay for showroom space. And so I did drink with her on Saturday night. I met her for the first time, and it's been maybe almost a year since she received her grant, and she's like, you know, I know it's been two years since I started my business, and like the grant really helped me. She did exactly with the what with the grant what she wanted to do and worked, and that's just just I don't know such proof that there's more to be done. Um, and I want to share these stories because there's so many girls who have applied for the grant who have awesome businesses, and there's just not enough grant 
grants to give away, you know. So how does that make you feel when you when really you sit cool. down for a year later and you really, see that, that really, she's done it? Really proud. I feel a little nostalgic and like, yeah, just really happy for these girls. And I want to help them because I... I'm like now for some reason in a position to and you know Kristen's going to be at Barnes and Noble tonight at uh, Union Square because I'm doing a, a Q&A there mm -hmm. and a signing and so you know Amy Astley who's the editor-in-chief at Teen mm -hmm. Vogue is moderating and it's like she's going to meet the editor-in-chief at Teen Vogue and I'm like bring her a scarf like you know like that's, I mean that's really it's really just cool like cool access and but but her like her product actually has like a real merit like it's beautiful stuff you know I'm not it's not like it's not really like charity but it's giving someone a leg up to like really kind mm -hmm. of amplify their business well because I wasn't even aware you know until I started writing about fashion that just to do a fashion show at fashion week is five hundred thousand dollars so to get into your industry is yeah. insane we've I never mean, done a fashion show no but actually. I mean but even to get into fashion and to make yeah. a success of it is a mm -hmm. huge deal on any level because the barrier to entry if your dad is not named Trump is pretty it extreme, is if you go you the know? traditional route you know that's the thing it's like if you if you want to be you know a CFDA award mm -hmm. winner or you want to be you know, adored by Vogue right out of the door, you know, yeah, you're going to have to spend a lot of money on creative or just like you have to have your shit together. And, you know, my, you know, it's like I, Nasty Gal grew through social media. I was talking to the customer. I wasn't talking to fashion publications who then talked to my mm -hmm. customer. So I think the internet has made this new, new opportunities for, for people to be entrepreneurs, to be in fashion or whatever it is that you want to be and find, uh, find the group that resonates with what you're doing without, um, you know, the middleman of, you know, whatever it may be, the powers, mm. the powers that be. If you could go back and do one thing differently, is there anything? There's probably, yeah, there's probably a lot of things, but there's, they're, they're like, if I did anything differently, I wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't know what I know. Um, I don't want to say that I haven't made mistakes because I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, and... It's, it's like I'm wiser today than mm -hmm. I was yesterday, and I just kind of trust in that. I think that's a really important thing. What has surprised you the most about being a girl boss? <laughs> being girl boss? Yeah. What has surprised me the most? Um, how bummed people are that I grew my bangs out. Like, I mean, people, yeah. They, people <laughs> want you to like be the same person that they were when they met you, mm -hmm. or the same person that they were when they heard of you, or the same... You know, they want you to be like their high school friend if you were friends in high school. They don't want you to, people will be selfish and try to keep you, the, I don't know. And I think it's important to just like keep doing you and keep evolving and keep moving and I don't know. I might have bangs again sometime. <laughs> I like your hair, damn it. Because bangs are really hard to maintain. This is like much. Bangs, they are so yeah. hard to maintain. Especially the choppy ones. Cause yeah. Like you have to have like you have to be really good to do choppy bangs well, and I've had like some really bad. You know, it's like, yeah, case by case. Are you still? I mean, so you're but you grew your business through direct interaction with fans and customers. Are you mm -hmm. still able to have that interaction, given how well known you are? Well, Girl Boss is kind of like a cool segue to that, and we now have two stores in LA, so I can actually go there and interact with customers. We're having an event this Thursday mm -hmm. at our Santa Monica store. Um, so that's a first, you know, Nasty Gal is a brand that feels like something. It's a fashion brand that actually, that was built on the internet that has a feeling, which I think is kind of unusual. And that feeling and that conversation, that exchange, the excitement is so much easier done in person um, that it's almost, yeah, it's like, it's really late in the game to have opened a store or been meeting our customers for the first time. I was just super heads down on the business and it's, it's cool. It's cool to be out there now. And what's your writing process like? Um, it's a lot of just like, kind of like word spewing into a device where I then like transcribe everything and then kind of like piece it apart and put it in places where it works. Um, I mean, the next book, I can say it's more visual. Mm -hmm. um, so while there are stories and there's still like some Q and A's and things with other people who aren't me, um, it's it's a it's a different it's a different process this time, but a lot of it is just like letting you know having a glass of wine and just like running your mouth and seeing what like amazing shit might come out and just being like yes. And then the next you day, know? sitting down and going through yeah. the transcription, which is always a joy. Totally. Yeah. 
<laughs> did you, uh, I get, where does your determination come from? Were you always like this, like even as a kid? I think my dad was really hard on me. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I'm an only child, so I have the ability to be very like unself aware. And as someone who didn't have like another kid to be like, you suck, or like what, mm-hmm. growing up, I learned that a little bit later on through relationships and friendships. And so I'm like my own worst enemy. I'm always kind of like looking outside of myself in and being like, are you an asshole? I mean, what are you doing talking about yourself in public? Like, does that sound weird? Like, whatever. And everybody thinks that. Um, but I think it's just, I don't know. I'm also, you know, I get, a, I get like kind of depressed when I'm idle. I'm like not good at relaxing. It's just part of who I am. I'm either like a total loaf who's like not showering and just disgusting or I'm like go, 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 go. And it's like, you know, I think go, 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 go is like how you can like maybe build a career for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do that. (laughs) And before we turn this over to the audience, do you ever see yourself stepping away entirely from Nasty Gal, handing it over to someone, selling it or handing it over to someone else and doing something completely different? Um, no, it seems so far out. I think nasty, you know, it's like any, anyone, it doesn't really matter. I own most of Nasty Gal today. Mm -hmm. If someone else were to own most of Nasty Gal, if, I mean, anyone who's smart enough to do that knows that I'm an important part of the brand and I think they know it would probably go to hell without me. So, no, I'm not saying that to like flatter myself. I'm just saying like any smart person would like keep me involved. (laughs) So it's, it's, it's been built, you know, largely around like, my spirit, my voice, and we are creating tools now that we can have objective conversations about. Um, so it's like, here's the brand. Now you can self-reflect on whether what you're writing or mm-hmm. shooting or whatever it is, posting on social media is in line with the brand. So it's not me being like, this is off-brand, or two people in a room together being like, Sophia wouldn't like that. It should be like, here's this thing. Oh, look, that's not, we didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not, a, it's not about my opinion versus your opinion. Because that's just like those conversations don't feel good for anybody involved. So I think that's important. I think it's amazing that you're in your early 30s and you've accomplished so much. Like that's really very, very, very Thanks. cool to see. Thank you. And that you have a freaking paperback out, man. Paperback! <laughs> Thanks. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Not about the bangs. Hi. Uh, Do you have any good pointers about using a social media to promote the company? Yeah, I mean, I would say post often, but don't post too often and have something of value, have something that people, that's worth sharing. So, I mean, it should start with your product and that your product is worth talking about because you can't polish a turd. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's my biggest piece of advice. (laughs) No, um, you know, I think just, you know, use the platforms, like post content that's native to the platform. So if you're going to post something on Pinterest, you know, make sure it's like the right size or, you know, whatever it is, if it's going to be on Instagram, certain things perform well on Instagram. You can monitor these things now. It's not like a shot in the dark. So just listen and don't be too attached to what you think is your good idea. Just, um, and you should be attached to what you think your brand is and kind of hold your ground. But um, you know, learn and, and keep tweaking, and I don't know, you'll, you'll figure it out. Can I go? Hi. Uh, you spoke a little about where you see the brand going in the future. Uh, can you just elaborate on how you envision that process unfolding? Wow. Um, well, I think it requires more planning now than it ever did before. Um, the future just kind of happened. I mean, I was we were, I was working hard. The company was working hard. We were buying lots of stuff. It was selling. We were taking pictures. Whatever. Um, to 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 scale a company like ours today requires so much more teamwork and planning and investment than it ever has. Um, it's really my CEO's lead um, to make that happen. But I mean, elaborate more. I mean, I, I don't know. I want Nasty Gal to be a global brand. I don't have, we don't have like a New York store opening yet. Like there's no big news to break. I wish there was. Um, but when there is, you know, I'll let you know. Everybody. I'll call you. Yeah. She'll text you. I'll text you. How you doing, Sophia? Hi, good. Hi. Um, I see you're pretty simple with, uh, the, with the way you said uh, you started writing the book because you were just writing about your life. Um, and it 
congratulations. It was a New York Times bestseller. Thanks. Um, so using that, taking that same attitude and just being yourself, now that you see that it got you to be New York Times bestseller, let's say you went a little bit more aggressively. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, you could accomplish just after just being yourself and getting to a high stage like this? Um, aggressively. I am being aggressive. <laughs> I mean, the podcast is kind of a next step. Another book is a next step. Building out the Girl Boss Foundation is another next step. Girl Boss could be a media business. It could be a conference business or just a conference. It could be so many more things. And I mean, it could be a venture capital fund. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't have plans for those things, but it's just like really fun to dream. Um, you know, it, it's. Uh, the media has kind of taken note. So, you know, I've lived in LA for almost five years now, but I did not move to LA to like do anything in television. Um, and I'm like very wary of kind of like all of that, but it's an interesting world and I like learning new things. So that's something I've been, you know, having some conversations about. You mean like a girl boss really TV show? Who knows? I don't know, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, when a book is really successful mm -hmm. and you have an agent at WMA, course, they're yeah. like, strike while the iron's hot. And then people want to meet with you. And then you're like, okay, maybe, you know? So we'll see. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of stuff. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. And one more question, please. Thank you for your time, Sophia. Um, I read your Forbes interview, actually, and you mentioned wow. some... Way device. back in 20, 2012. Oh, the um, new one, the, the recent one, one today. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you, you mentioned um, some interesting advice, which was to be an employee first. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could sort of flesh that out, because I've never heard that one before. Totally. Um, I mean, I was an employee, but not a great employee. I do think I learned a lot from working at Borders Books and Subway, and just like, this is how you do things. You don't point. You like do this when you take a customer somewhere. Just little things like that that stuck with me from like, just working like a corporate retail job. Um, but, you know, there's there's so much that I think I would have done differently if I had worked in management prior to starting Nasty Gal. So it's one thing to just be like a young founder CEO. It's another to be a young founder CEO who's like never managed anybody. So I think I could have done a better job if that were the case, and that's what I really meant by that. Well, but then you could argue Nasty Gal probably wouldn't be what it is. You know, it would be something different. Yeah, who knows? So you who pull knows? like one, one yeah. pin, pin out in the whole history, you know. And, you the, know. and, you know, if you had gone, let's say you got to management school and got an MBA, maybe you would have been too scared or too, or you would have been too aware of the realities and the pitfalls to take a risk. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Giving advice is a hairy thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Go out and start your own Thanks. businesses. Yeah, and Sophia's you. book is out in paperback today. Paperback. And Kendall. Thank you.